1930. Right. So what is your oldest memory that you have? Oh, not on the farm where I was born. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Well, you don't remember being born, but tell us about your birth, where you were born. On the farm, and, and a doctor came to the house and del delivered me. And I was the found out later from his granddaughter that I was the last child he delivered. And uh, after that, he just went to work at the hospital. And he took care of Leroy whenever we had that accident. And he sewed up his face. He had 84 stitches in his face from that wreck. And the same doctor that delivered me sewed him sewed up. Sewed him up? <laughs> wow. I thought that was kind That's of That's interesting. And, and what was the mood like? in America or in Cleveland when, when that oh, war started? Oh, we were very patriotic. I mean, everybody was out to uh, applaud the soldiers when they came on leave, and we went around gathering scrap iron all over the place with the movie. They had the uh, exits on. They'd stop the movie about ever once every hour and run stuff about the war and that's where we got our news mostly was on the, in the movie theater and uh, they would always play God Bless America and uh, played religious songs too back in those days it was not wrong to do talk about God I mean they talk about God all the time in the the stores and then when you'd go in to buy anything they'd say god bless america the last words they'd say when you go out to the store when you bought something okay they were strict was the family all close with the cousins and oh my goodness we all lived within three or four blocks of each other and we got together at every excuse I mean, we were always getting together with each other, and we had uh, cousins going off to war, and we'd all go to the bus station and see them off, you know, and then when they came home on leave, we'd all be at the bus station to welcome Waiting them home. On, yeah. And uh, so we had, I did get saved when I was 19, but the boys, uh, Bud didn't get saved till on his deathbed. I don't know uh, how you met Dad. Oh, well, I was a dancer, and I wasn't a Christian yet. <laughs> and so we went to American Legion dance, and he didn't dance. Why? He was just there to flirt with girls, I think. And uh, so anyway my friend and i we didn't have a date or anything we just Velma and i went dancing and uh so at the end of the dance um somebody came up behind me that I, it was cold i don't know that because i had a heavy coat and he ran up behind me and i didn't see his face real good but he grabbed my coat was hanging there on the rack. He grabbed my coat and threw it around me, and he was gone. And I thought, well, I said, Belma, I said, who was that? She said, well, whoever he was, he was good looking. I said, oh, well, okay. <laughs> well, he came to the door. I told Mama, I said, go to that door and see if he's got cowboy boots on. I'm not going with him if he's got on <laughs> cowboy boots. And <laughs> so Mama said, I'm not, you got yourself into this year. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do your dirty work. And so she wouldn't go to the door. I had to go to the door. And sure enough, he had on cowboy boots. <laughs> so I said, if you come back on another day, do not wear cowboy boots. I don't like them. Daddy wore them, but I hated cowboy boots for some reason. I think I was just thought I was too prissy for that. You know, I'm very prissy. And uh, 
always just have to dress better than anybody else and have my hair just so and all my makeup and my jewelry. But anyway, and Leroy said he started laughing because he thought he really was getting away with something and he started making a noise then clacking his heels kind of when he was walking down the he wanted me to notice that he had on cowboy boots and I looked. I said, oh my gosh, you got those cowboy boots on. And uh, he laughed. He thought that was so funny because he wanted to fool me because he wanted to wear, he loved those cowboy boots. Oh boy. Well, I... He'd been sending money. He was on that ship. Uh, he had he ran what he called it an act act gun. It was one that was pointed at the kamikaze fighters, that, suicide fighters that would come and attack the planes, and that was his job to keep them away, uh, either shoot them down or get rid of them. And uh, so anyway, for two and a half years, he saved his money wanted to buy a farm. He didn't spend, well, he's on that ship. Everything was mostly supplied except just a few personal items. So he saved practically every penny of his salary for two and a half years. Then when he got home, his parents had spent it. Yeah. He stayed mad about that for in the service because he said, you are not dating servicemen. That's the end of that. But I so I said, well, he's just 19. So, well, they said, oh, well, okay, that's not bad. You're 16, three years is not too bad. <laughs> well, one day I was, I don't know what, was looking at his billfold, and there it was. He was already 21. <laughs> and uh, I didn't tell Daddy, though, but, you know, Daddy took a liking to Leroy. Leroy was really ornery and always telling jokes and carrying on, and Daddy was a joker, too, and very social, and they hit it off. So, Leroy was. so he proposed on the fourth day, the but when did you day. say yes? Oh my goodness, I, I was just a junior then, of course. I said, I'm, are you kidding me? I'm not, I can't get married this young. <laughs> and uh, my daddy's date, well, I wanted some blue jeans. The blue jeans got popular that year. Now this is how dumb I was. <laughs> I told Larry, daddy said, you are not wearing blue jeans. That is boys clothes, I mean, there is no way you're living in this house and wearing blue jeans. And so I told Leroy, I said, I was somewhere after, after the first year, and I said, uh, you know what, I'll set a date if you'll promise to buy me some blue jeans. <laughs> that was what it was settled on. <laughs> September. I got married in April 16th, 1948, and then I would have been 18. In, uh, oh, that was uh, before, right before your senior year in high school? Uh, that was my senior year. So you Well, Leroy had bought some furniture. He bought a bedroom set and a, and a dining room set. I hadn't bought the living room set yeah but they put the um, bed on top of the house the yeah, we were mattress and that. everything when we got there and it, ah okay are we gonna get the bed down <laughs> i don't remember i can't remember how they got that bed off of that roof was a two-story house it wasn't just an ordinary little house and did, you, did you pass out gum at that uh, chivalry? What did he say? Did you pass out gum at the chivalry? Oh my goodness, Leroy was so ornery and so at the, <laughs> we all, they, you always have a party after the chivalry. So Leroy said, um, and I did not know he was going to do that. He mentioned it earlier one day, and I, and I said, oh, no, you're not going to buy laxatives. <laughs> you could buy that 
laxatives that looked like uh, yeah. gum. You know, it was white. It would look just exactly like gum. Chicklets. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, little 12, 10, 12 year old boys, they're just kind of greedy. And those boys were grabbing that, thinking that was candy. <laughs> and just his two cousins, Jimmy and uh, Lewis were just eating that up a storm. And I said, well, I found out when he started, Leroy was laughing and I thought, oh my goodness, I wonder if he put laxatives in that candy. Sure enough, so I was going over to those boys. Boys, I don't think you ought to eat that. Boys, please, please don't eat that. Oh yeah, we love this. And I was saying, don't do that. That'll make you sick. Well, sure enough, it did. It made him really, really sick. And Leroy thought that was so funny. And I didn't think that was a bit funny, but that's what he, he just was ornery like that. He just loved to pull trees. He just, I think he wanted me around so he could boss me. My dad wasn't, <laughs> didn't want kids. And he flat told me when I was six years old I've forgiven him for this, but just to tell you the facts of life, <laughs> he uh, told me, I never wanted anyone but your mother. I never wanted children, and I especially didn't want girls. So that was the way I, I that's what I had to, mm. for a dad. I mean, that's just the way. Neck and mm. face and head. I found a piece of shrapnel in his head. One time he said, I got something up here in the top of my head, it just hurts like everything. And I looked and it looked like a boil and I got the needle and started digging and it was a piece of shrapnel. Jeez. It was just coming out of his head. Wow. After and this was a year later, wow. or longer, oh this yeah, was longer years than that, two years yeah. later. Uh, she was born in 1950, and he thought... And what was her birthday? Uh, it October? was August, August. August the 18th. August the 18th, okay. And uh, he thought the sun rose and set in her. He was the happiest man you ever saw, because he was starting his family. Mm -hmm. And it's like he didn't have a family growing up. So he's gonna have his own family and raise it the way he wanted it, and raise it to love him, you know? And she did, she was crazy about him. And he would take her and the, he'd only, he had two seed buckets on his tractor that would trickle the seeds down and they could do two rows at once, but in order to let her go with him, he just put seed in one bucket and he'd put her in the other bucket. And he'd take her down there to work and let her ride in there while he did one bucket of corn just so she could ride with him. So it took him twice as long with her. Uh, it took him twice as long then to do it. Oh, and yeah, because he, he could do two rows at a time, but because of her, he'd only do one row at a time, and he wanted to do that, but he had her with him all the time. That I was in the hospital. Well, by the time he got there, Darwin was already born. Well, I'm telling you, he was in cloud nine because he had his boy. <laughs> And uh, he was beside himself telling everybody, I'm telling you, he's going around telling everybody in the hospital, I've got a boy, I've got a boy. <laughs> For 30 years, and boy, and children. I, I ended up teaching the second, third, fourth, and fifth grades. Those kids kept me with them every time they'd go to another class. They wouldn't want to change teachers. <laughs> Square feet was your house on Palm? Uh, 1,200. That's the house you grew up in? Yeah. One, oh, that one bathroom drove me nuts. One after I started like having like people over to eat. Yeah. One bathroom. Oh, uh, He'd sprinkle this uh, grass. He 
D was fertilizer. Everything in my man, he had that thing just growing, and you could, you could just see it just plain. He drives. <laughs> <laughs> his name is there. His, he, he's trying to figure out how did his name get in the middle of this law. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Bitty guys and in the bathtub, and I was trying to throw water in his face, and the cup slipped out of my hand, and. <laughs> Oh. And it cut his forehead wide open. Oh, yeah. And so Leroy's there, uh, and uh, they were screeching bloody murder in there. And so I wanted to call the hospital, call the doctor, and I said, Leroy, get in there and put that cloth on his head. And he's like, he's paralyzed. He can't, he can't move. So I said, Darvin, get that washcloth and put it on Greg's head. I had to have Darwin, he's just a little guy. Yeah, we but he did. Old. He put it up on, I can't remember. Well, surely he well, did. He got something when he got injured because he hadn't been in the hospital for two weeks. Yeah. They put that, dig, dug that shrapnel out of him, his neck and yeah. his head. Uh, that blood, that gun exploded when they, the, the, the shell hit the gun. One of the one of that uh, the shells. I don't know if he got the airplane or not. He he shot down some. There airplanes. might be a, a registry. You could... I didn't tell you much about Vicky. Vicky was a, so extremely extremely intelligent. I have no idea who she took it from, but she was. She could count to 30 by the time she was two years old. Mm, she wow. could talk just like an adult by the time she was two. I mean, she could put big, long words together. And uh, everybody in the family was absolutely amazed about her. And so Leroy's grandpa, I, I didn't like what he would say. And it, I remember thinking, I don't like him to say that, but he had, He'd laugh and he'd say, that girl, smartest girl I ever saw in my life. And But she had this teddy bear she was crazy about. And she had a song, me and my teddy bear. She's got no hair, got no tongue, and she's got no hair. But I don't care. She just made a song <laughs> oh, she made teddy that. bear. Oh. <laughs> and uh, still think about it sometimes. I thought, I'm gonna have to apologize to her. She was such a good kid, little thing. But she ran off, her dog ran off. And I never had to worry about her ever. But she chased after that dog down the road and she had been gone. Uh, a guy, a neighbor that was driving along and saw her running after the dog and he stopped and got her and brought her back home. Mm. But I got a switch and switched her little legs and she just cried and so I always wish I hadn't have done that. But she said grandma, yeah. or grandma, well, grandma still, but she would say mama, would you get the back team? Oh, used to, we use back team for everything. And she said, would you get the back team and put it on my legs? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, turn the, oh. Knowing what you know now about life, what yeah. would you go back and tell your younger self? I would have become a Christian sooner. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Because I... Uh, well, you need to start serving the Lord as young as possible because it uh, it gives the less, and Grandma always told me this, it gives the devil a less chance of getting into you and making you tempt you to do wrong. If you start serving the Lord immediately, just as soon as you're 12 or so, you know, usually around 12 when you first start, serving the Lord it just takes away his power and grandma used to say don't ever give the devil any part in your mind or in your life 
Because he'll come back again and again. If he gets you to do one wrong thing, he'll come back to that one wrong thing and beat you to death about it. She told me.